Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees. Happy summer to all of you. It's the end of July, and if you've been following along, we've done a part one and a part two of what are your baby bees doing. We started that back in June, and I'll link below those two videos that we showed uh, when we opened up your nesting blocks. And then today, we're gonna show you part three of what are your baby bees doing, so we can see the, transi the transition from teeny tiny egg to spinning a silk cocoon to a full cocoon and what it looks like inside those nesting chambers. Um, where we're at right now with the season is if you have leaf cutter bees and you live in a warm state, they have probably all emerged um, and are out busy pollinating. Here in Washington state, at least in, um, I'm in Bam on Bainbridge Island, it's still a little cold. We haven't been too hot, too warm. Some of my blocks haven't even emerged yet. So I'm still waiting for my leaf cutter bees to emerge, but I've heard from a lot of you that they have already emerged. So just give them some time um, around here in our area where it's cooler. Um, sometimes they'll emerge even the second week of August and then they'll just continue pollinating. Uh, Jim, our owner, says they are actually better pollinators than the mason bees. Don't tell the masons. Um, they are teeny tiny little pollinators and they uh, catch and do and pollinate everything in your yard. So leafcutter bees are really remarkable pollinators. So if you have them, keep an eye open for them. They're fast. They buzz around. Um, they also belly flop like the mason bees with all that little hair on their bellies, the scopa, and they get completely covered in loose pollen, which is why it makes them such remarkable pollinators. But today I want to show you the inside of your mason bee nesting, bee nesting block for your part three of what are your baby bees doing. And I have a new toy I want to introduce you to. This is my new microscope, my new toy. I have been pulling some really, really cool videos that I get to share with all of you. And when I speak at live events, I'm able to fire this thing up and gather people around and they can see live what they can see on the screen of what I'm opening up inside the nesting block. Um, but I see some mono wasps on some of my blocks today and so I'm going to get some videos of that and we're just going to transition right now. I'm going to open up, uh, I've got several little blocks that I'm going to open up. Please don't you cut the straps on these. It's really important that these stay closed to keep the bees protected inside. You're going to mail all of this back to us in September. You keep the black house to refill next season and then just send the nesting block back to us in September. We already have on our schedule the first part of October to harvest and clean 3 million mason bee cocoons. I'll put that video down below, below too. If you're harvesting and cleaning your own bees, um, fall is the time to do that. And um, if you saw the video last year, I'll, I'll link it. I'll link everything below. But there is a video that we've done if you're hosting your own bees on how to properly harvest and clean all of them in the fall. But for right now, mason bees should all be down. No mason bees should be out right now. It's summertime. There's predators, not only birds, but there's mono wasps that get into um, your nesting blocks. Uh, uh, mono wasp are kleptoparasite. They have this long ovipositor. It looks like a stinger, but it's not. It's she pokes it into your cocoon. She gets in here, pokes it into your cocoon, lays her babies. And um, so these need to all be out this summer. Mason bees do not stay out year round. That's one of our steps that we're trying to teach everyone. So, all right, let's transition, show you part three of what are your baby bees doing. All right, let's go. All right, well, I already cut the straps on this because it was too hard for me to do one-handed and film at the same time. Um, but please don't cut your straps. It's really important that your block and your nesting block stays nice and secure so that when you ship it back to us, um, your bees are safe inside. But for educational purposes and for our part three series of what are your baby bees doing, I uh, just cut the straps and now we're gonna open up your nesting material and let's take a peek inside. Oh, look at that. They're even up on the top. All right. So this is very cool. So they've already started to spin their silk cocoons. You can see there's a whole row of cocoons on the top as well. And those are pollen mites. Oh, this will be fun to look at under my microscope. So let's take a look at this. So you see really healthy cocoons, a cell of cocoons, and then these are all pollen mites. So I'll get some video of those up close. Let's see what's under the next one. Yep, other healthy cocoons and then more pollen mites. So again, it's really, really important to harvest and clean every fall to remove your mason bee cocoons away from predators, especially the pollen mites. Because what happens is when, if you don't clean, these healthy cocoons are going to emerge in spring 
they are going to crawl through the pollen mites to get out at the end and then the pollen mites will cling to its back and spread and then mama mason bee will bring it back into the cell but you can see how there's healthy cocoons and then an entire cell of pollen mites have taken over um let me put this back because there's all these cocoons on the top as well oh and then i'm gonna have some fun showing you guys what this looks like under the microscope all right oh this is a really good cell okay so look at all these really great healthy cocoons so when you see this black stuff on top of your cocoons, that is called frass. That is just mason bee poop, essentially. And so if you scrape that off, when you do the cleaning process in the fall, you'll, you'll remove all of that. Um, but again, then we see more pollen mites. So oh, more pollen mites there as well. So let me transition and stick this block or this tray under the microscope and let's go have some fun. All right, so here are the pollen mites up close under the microscope. They're wiggly and they're teeny tiny and there are just thousands of them inside this nesting cell. Um, there is no longer a mason bee larva alive anymore, which is what the damaging part, these pollen mites just decimate. If you don't clean your nesting material, they can decimate your entire bee population over time. So if, you, if you've had your mason bees out, you've never cleaned them, they're out year round, and all of a sudden you're not seeing as many mason bees as you used to. Um, it might be because of either pollen mites, Houdini fly, chalk brood, there's all sorts of things that can get into your nesting chambers and harm your baby bees. Um, so this is just another great example of what these little bees look like up close, or what these little pollen mites look like up close. Um, I'm going to show you and transition to another video that I did of pollen mites on top of a mason bee. So let me do that really quick. All right, here is the video of the mason bee covered in pollen mites. And I'm gonna zoom in and show you these little pollen mites up close. I've never seen them uh, with my own eyes before. I've gotten pictures from our bee labs and our teams that study pollen mites. But you can literally see their little arms stretching to try to reach for that scopa. That's the hair that mason bees have all over their bodies. And um, it's pretty remarkable to see these little um, pollen mites up close. Uh, I'm gonna show you another video as well that I got just because it's so fascinating. Um, so here's another video of the pollen mites on the back of a mason bee. And again, this is how they cling to mason bees. They, they attach themselves to the hairs. They catch a ride uh, when the mason bee crawls out of that nesting chamber. And then it hitches that ride all over your garden, all over your flowers. And then other mason bees can get the pollen mites and, and they take it back to their cell. So you can see how they can multiply rapidly. And when mason bees aren't cleaned, um, they just multiply and then we'll just get all over your yard. So that is the back of a mason bee with pollen mites. All right, so that wraps up our part three series of what are your baby bees doing, where we take a look inside a nesting chamber and we see how your bees have now spun their silk cocoons. They will hibernate in those cocoons all winter long and then emerge the following spring. Um, in, the, in September, you'll mail the nesting blocks back and we'll clean them. As you saw, those pollen mites are really bad predators to our little mason bees. And so if you have your own mason bees, make sure you get them away from those predators. I didn't find any chalk brood today, but um, I'll just show a little bubble of what they look like when you look inside your nesting chamber. They're black. Um, it's the larvae that's eaten the fungus. It's a chalk brood is a fungus that lives in the spores on flower that's on flowers and so they'll collect the pollen they don't realize there's a little spore of chalk brood in it they take it mama mason bee takes it back to her nesting chamber the baby bee starts eating the pollen in just that little spore of chalk brood and it essentially dries that little baby bee up makes them black and then the spores burst and that also lingers inside your nesting chambers. So when you harvest and clean, you're re removing the Houdini fly, you're removing the chalk brood and you're re removing the pollen mites. Um, Houdini fly, we didn't see any of those in these blocks either, um, but Houdini fly are also kleptoparasites. Um, they wait for mama mason bee to leave. She crawls in, lays all her little babies inside that mud pollen baby, inside that nesting chamber. And Mama Mason Bee doesn't know, she caps it with mud. And now there's a whole, uh, about 15, sometimes 20 little tiny Houdini fly larvae inside that nesting chamber. And again, everything stays, chalk brood, pollen mites, Houdini fly, 
all those predators stay inside your nesting chambers until the following spring when everything emerges. So you can really make an impact by harvesting and cleaning your own bees, or if you're renting from us, we do all of that for you so that you're able to get these bees, give these bees a better shot at emerging healthy and safely the following spring. All right, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at info at rentmasonbees.com. If you like this video, please follow our YouTube channel. I try to post as many educational videos as I possibly can to teach everyone proper care and maintenance of mason bees and leafcutter bees. Uh, so yeah, feel free to reach out anytime and happy pollinating. Bye.